Thank you very much. Um, the more observant among you will have spotted that I am not, as advertised, Paul Gray. Um, Paul has asked me to pass on his apologies this afternoon. Unfortunately, he had to attend a funeral, and he's therefore asked me to start this afternoon on his behalf. So, uh, so you have to bear with me a little bit longer. Um, thank you to everybody who has been tweeting over the morning. I had an opportunity to have a look at some of the uh, Twitter comments over lunchtime, and uh, it's really interesting to see those brought together. So do please, um, while not, of course, in any way disrespecting those speaking to you, uh, continue to do that this afternoon. A um, couple of things to draw out of, of that Twitter feed. Very interesting focus on um, the importance of engaging people and engaging communities. Clearly, much of what Marky Biaggi had to say uh, really struck a chord with many of you. Uh, importance of seeing people in relationships, not in structures. Uh, a lot of you just saying you were having good discussions, so that's good, that you valued the examples of real people doing real things in real places, and of course that was part of the value of today. Before we move into the business of this afternoon, I thought I'd just uh, share a few more reflections of my own from this morning and put those in the context of this afternoon's focus, which is about workforce development. And uh, with gratitude to colleagues who were listening with a, a more acute ear than, than I was able to this morning, I'm going to gr group those in three sections, um, something about the workforce context, something about boundaries, and something about relationships. And I hope even if exactly that categorization doesn't work for you, you'll find something there that strikes a chord. In terms of workforce, I was really struck this morning by the multidisciplinary context. People mentioned it in a number of different places, but there are a lot of people whose jobs are slightly different who are working here together to try and achieve the same outcome. And while on the one hand that gives you a wonderful rich tapestry of perspective and experience, um, it's clearly a challenge to bring together that range of experience. There are varied skill sets, different people working in different parts of the organization, more or less at the front line, as we've heard, and we'll have a different perspective on the task. And there's a real leadership role there in making sure that we hear all of those perspectives and voices and synthesize them in a way that remains focused on the vision and the outcome. Uh, there's the historical legacy of bringing together different cultures, different systems, what the Deputy First Minister referred to as the pink paper, yellow paper issue. I'm not sure if that is actually true, but we would all recognize uh, the validity of that in different organizations. We talked about words on a job description not being enough to animate uh, the leadership role. And there is an issue, as I said, about the way in which we give life to the things that we're asked to do, but also help other people who work for us to give life to what they are asked to do. And I think this notion that we as leaders listen to our people and create the conditions for them to listen to their people and ensure that we have channels right up and down through organizations that enable those voices to be heard. So those are my thoughts about workforce context. There's in boundaries. Uh, I thought the presentations from Tayside in particular really highlighted some of the uh, geographical and boundary issues. There, Leslie was talking about Tayside Health Board bringing together three partnerships operating in three different contexts. And clearly, you have to think about that in quite a different way from the way in which you do if you're really looking at, at one partnership. And I was really interested and taken by the way Leslie described the way that, that, that all that fitted together. And of course, as she very um, eloquently described, it leads you to think about protocols for governance. Um, these are things which certainly we've sometimes talked today about being the technicalities and the detail and the weeds. But actually, we know if we don't have that right, then people don't feel that they've got the space to operate and they don't feel empowered. So it's very important. When I was talking to Peter Housden, we uh, used the term narrative, and we talked about guiding coalitions and about allies and a clear sense of purpose. And again, all the keynote speakers this morning brought us back to that sense of why we're here. I'm absolutely certain that we're Paul here rather than I right now. He would not want this moment to go past without talking about the 2020 vision for the health service, more people living longer, healthier lives in their own home or in a homely setting, and putting people at the absolute center of that. And then finally, threaded through all that we heard this morning was something about relationships, about trust, about attitudes and behaviors, about the importance, as I've just said, of being connected to the front line, about what we're trying to do being everybody's business, so nobody thinking that it's somebody else's job, about the sharing of learning, and having the confidence to discern the applicability in your particular context and not falling into the temptation to say, oh, well, if that worked over there, it wouldn't work over here, or were they just different, but really challenging ourselves to ask whether something that has made a difference in one part of the country or in one partnership is valid for us too. And then finally, there's the empowering of leaders at all places in the organization, regardless of level and status. What really struck me about all the films we saw today, and I'm sure about the ones that you've yet to see as well, 
is the fact that the leaders who were taking decisions that changed the lives of those people were not chief executives, they weren't chief officers, they were people in a very immediate one-to-one -one situation with individuals who felt that they had the space, the permission, the empowerment to say, I know something that might make a difference here, and to do it. Quite often, what was invisible there was the person who set the context and who gave that empowerment. But my guess is that in every situation, there was somebody who was creating the conditions for that. And that's something which the people who are in this room today need to think about the scope for them to do as well. You will all have had individual things that you took out of this morning. But what I would really encourage you to take into this afternoon is the connection between you and the people who work for you, the people who work around you, your peers, your partners in making a difference. We're going to see a very short film before I introduce the Cabinet Secretary, which is a real focus designed to think about the front line. Um, it's six one-minute Vox Pop clips that have been captured specifically for this purpose. And it's an attempt to try and bring alive what I've just been talking about in terms of the multidisciplinary set of staff voices from across the whole health and social care spectrum who are going to make integration a reality. So I'd be really grateful if we could show that film now. Thanks. I think there are a number of issues that w the health and social care agenda will face moving forward. Firstly, in some regards, integration will only work at certain levels. As someone who's been working in the health service for 30 years, I wouldn't dream of trying to tell a social worker who's been doing the job 30 years how to do their job. And I wouldn't dream of thinking it was appropriate for me to try to manage or micromanage that team. And in the same way, I would not expect someone from social care to try to manage an NHS team. So where there are big opportunities for symbiotic working, I think we also have to respect professional boundaries and professional experience and allow teams that are good at what they do to evolve and work symbiotically, but not to expect full, complete integration at every level because I don't think that is completely appropriate. Merging the disciplines of social work and health, there's different policies and procedures that come with those disciplines and working within those policies and pre procedures, staff need to come on board to be able to make that work. And that has been part of the difficulty, is ensuring that all staff are, able, are wanting to work towards what we are trying to achieve, which is positive outcomes for individuals. But part of doing that is merging both policies and procedures to make it work for a team instead of it just being for separate professions. Well, certainly some of the challenges that I've come across already in the short period that I've been working in this manner is the multiple different uh, projects that are ongoing. They're all providing great care, uh, but it can be really confusing. So I was talking to uh, a physiotherapist this morning and trying to explain what I could do, and he was pointing out, is this not the same as what this other group is doing, and this one, and how does it fit in with them? And so I think there is a lot of confusion about the multiple different things that are happening. It's how we try and pull those all together. And that's not easy, but I know certainly from the hospital at home point of view, we've got a hospital at home forum whereby the different teams, East, Mid, um, and West Lothian, as well as Edinburgh Central, the different teams producing this are all trying to work together, get together, so we've got a common language, um, and that we're trying to make our processes as similar as possible, so that it's less confusing for the different people referring in and for the patients and the carers themselves. Some of the challenges we have come up against is we don't all work nine to five, Monday to Friday, and service is it's a 24 hour service. So many of the district nurses kind of work through the day, GPs work through the day, whereas social work can be more 24 hours. So one of the biggest challenges is getting to coordinate to meet up with a district nurse or to meet with a GP so that we can then do a joint visit to the, the person that we support. So it's just basically we, could, we all work in different buildings as well. So kind of meeting up is probably one of the biggest challenges. Overcoming some of the challenges is as um, we now have each individual's direct um, mobile numbers. Um, they also have ours. We're also in contact through emails as well. So I think the main benefits to a patient for an integrated approach is that they get the, the right care at the right time, the right professionals involved, they're not having to wait a long time for different agencies to become involved and the communication between those agencies is much better so there's not repetition of information. The patient doesn't feel they need to keep 
repeating things to the same person or to different people. And also that with the blurring of roles that maybe a physiotherapist um, is able to do what might traditionally be a bit of occupational therapy work and then vice versa, the occupational therapist might be able to do a bit of what is traditionally physiotherapy work. So the person's not having to get quite so many people involved in their care, which for the patient themselves is a much better experience. Integrated working at the end of the day is all about relationships and it's all about communication and what some of the challenges are as organisations that come together whether it's primary care, secondary care or social work, we work in different cultures and those cultures need time to kind of get used to each other, to build kind of trust in relationship working and also to, to remodel the way they work so that you have acquired if you like new partners, new people to help you solve problems. And that just takes time. Also, I think the cultures are different in terms of their speeds of decision making. They are used to working at different ways, at different rates, and with different consultation. So all of that just needs time to kind of get in sync. And I think this is the beginning of a journey rather than the end. So on the principle that we uh, adopted this morning of saying that it's really important to have the voices in the hall of the people who are not here and on who, how much of this depends, I think that was a really helpful introduction to this afternoon.